Okay, Kyle, it's Trigonometry. Uh, tree. Hopefully, uh, week went one, one okay for you. I just want you to know that whatever works for you for assignment, assignment uh, submission is fine. If you want to take a picture of that and send it in, uh, if you want to use the equation editor and send it to Google Docs. Um, I know that uh, there's been a lot of challenges with Schoology. I don't. I see things on my end. I don't see things on your end. It sounds like people have been struggling to submit. Uh, if you need uh, assignments uh, sent out. Uh, if you have any just general suggestions, please let me know, and I'll, I'll try to uh, you know help you. I don't want things to be frustrating on your end. I always feel bad when, when you know students end up getting the brunt of it. So, but uh, today uh, we're going to do an easy part of the lesson and a little bit more complicated part. Okay, and uh, it's uh, operations on complex numbers. Okay, and we're working on this uh, both days this week. Okay, both days uh, that that you're working on stuff. So. Um, uh, we have two complex numbers here. Uh, z sub 1 is 2 times cosine of pi over 4 plus i sine of pi over 4. And then z sub 2 is equal to 5 times cosine of uh, pi over 3 uh, plus i sine of pi over 3. Uh, z sub you know, 1, uh, z sub 2, z sub 3, uh, these are just short ways of writing a complex number. So we uh, really reserve the, uh, the letter z to represent a complex uh, number. So anyway... Uh, what we want to do, our first example is just do z sub 1, and we're going to multiply that by z sub 2. Now, we can't really show you all the ins and outs of why it works out the way it does, but it just so happens if you take these two things and you multiply them, we look at the radius out front, we have 2 and we have 5, and we simply just multiply that together to get 10. Simple enough, right? Then what happens to the inside? Cosine... Uh, plus I sine, and what is it that we do with the angles? Well, it turns out that for the angles, you add them. You add the angles. So we have pi over 4 and pi over 3. If we were to add those, we would find common denominators. We would have uh, 3 pi over 12 and 4 pi over 12. So if you're going to add those two together, you get 7 pi over 12. So just to recap, if you're multiplying two complex numbers together, you multiply the R values, you add together the theta values, and that gives you your result. If you would like to do z sub 1 divided by z sub 2, so we're going to divide these two. You've guessed right, what we do is instead of multiplying the R values, we divide the R values. So you get 2 fifths times cosine of plus I sine of. And then what goes in the other spots? Well, instead of adding them, you, you guessed it, you subtract them. So 3 pi over 12 minus 4 pi over 12 gives me negative pi over 12. And you guys all remember that we can't leave a negative angle. And so with cosine, the negative just disappears. So we end up with 2 over 5 times the cosine of pi over 12. But with sine, the negative moves out front, so it becomes minus i sine of pi over 12. And that's that. So multiplying and dividing complex numbers is really quite straightforward and simple. Now what we want to do is we want to take it to a power. In order to save time, I'm going to pause this, and I'll be back with you in just a second. Okay, I'm back here with you. Um, <clears throat> now what we want to do is uh, something that is going to just kind of blow your minds. I want you to know that we are reducing material. So um, the one thing that we're not going to look at, I'll post some videos so you can see it, but you know, what, is, what is, for example, the fourth root of... Uh, 3 minus um, minus i roots of 2, you know, something like that. Um, how do you find out what that result is uh, within our complex analysis? That's a, that's a pretty tough problem. We're not going to spend the time doing that. We're definitely getting rid of material here. But uh, this part, you definitely want to see. This is important. Um, you have z to the nth power. So if we take a complex number and raise it to the nth power, for example, 1 minus i to the 100th, could you imagine sitting down and multiplying out 1 minus i 100 times? That would be extremely difficult to do, extremely difficult to do, okay? Um, and so we're, we're not going to really um, worry about trying to do that by hand right now. 
we're going to take a different approach. And it's called de Mavre's theorem. De Mavre was a mathematician, uh, famous in his work with complex analysis. And uh, he came up with a nice way of showing how you actually operate on these, uh, on these complex numbers. And what you do is if you have um, R times cosine of theta plus I sine of theta, uh, hopefully now you guys are really ingrained in understanding that that is trigonometric form of a complex number. If you simply take um, your number and put it into trigonometric form, here's all you do. If z is raised to the n, then r is raised to the n. And if z is raised to the n, then theta, you multiply by n. And that becomes the basis of de Mavre's theorem. You raise r to the power, and then you simply just multiply theta by n, whatever that power is. So it's going to take a little bit of time. I've got nine minutes to do it because I've only got 15 minutes per video. I'm six minutes in. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at 1 minus i to the 100th power. So we look at 1 minus i to the 100th power. We're going to simplify that in uh, a nice, easy way. First thing we do is we have to turn it into trig form. So 1 minus i is the same thing as r cosine of theta plus i sine of theta. I need an r value and I need a theta value. How do we come up with r? r is the square root of a squared, 1, plus b squared. 1. And that gives me square root of 2. So the root of 2, or underwrite as 2 to the 1 half, and you'll see why here in a little bit. So I've got 2 to the 1 half times cosine of something plus i sine of something. Now what I need is a theta value. In order to find theta, we say tangent of theta is equal to b, which is negative 1, divided by a, which is positive 1. So where is tangent of theta equal to negative 1? Well, you know, tangent is negative in the second quadrant and the fourth quadrant. Which quadrant would this be in? 1 minus i. If you were to graph 1 minus i, you would go over 1, and you would go down 1. So that would place you in the fourth quadrant. And hopefully from those notes that I gave to you, you recognize now that uh, where is tangent equal to 1? That's at a 45 degree angle. So that means that this angle here is 315 degrees, or in radians, we have theta equal to 7 pi over 4. 7 pi over 4. So the first step is to take it and transform it from uh, complex form into trigonometric form. That was our first step. Now let's apply the power. 1 minus i to the 100th power is going to be 2 to the 1 half. And what do we do to that thing? We raise it to the 100th power. Raise it to the 100th power times the cosine of, what do we do to the angle? We multiply by 100. 7 pi times 100 over 4, plus i sine of 7 pi times 100 over 4. So now we just want to simplify this. And as you simplify it, you want to write it two ways, in trigonometric form and then back into complex form. We're going to show you both so you can understand the answers as you see them on your answer key. First of all, 2 to the 1 half to the 100. If I have a power to a power, what do I do? I multiply. And we get 2 to the 50th. That's kind of handy. I don't actually figure out what 2 to the 50th is. That's a huge number. But I can write it in smaller form that way. That's fine. And then let's figure out this. Cosine of 7 pi um, times 100 over 4. Um, well, 100 over 4 is 25. That's 25. And 25 times 7, well, 25 times 8 is going to be 200. So 25 times 7 is going to be 175 pi. Now, I know that for you, this may look like, well, um, you know, 175 pi, that's way too big. 
it is, your, an your angle needs to be between zero and two pi, zero and two pi. So this is way too big. So 175 pi, if I can just do a little demonstration here for you, a quick way to kind of figure out where 175 pi is. Well, that's one pi, two pi, three pi, four pi, five pi. So all the odd pies end up over here. All the even ones end up over here. So 175 pi is just the same as pi. That's trigonometric form of our complex number. 2 to the 50th times the cosine of pi plus i times the sine of pi. That's our trig form. You also want to write your answer into complex form. And that's not that bad to do. Watch how we're going to do it. 2 to the 50th times what is the cosine of pi? If you think back to your unit circle, what is the cosine of pi? I'm going to erase this and make room. Should be able to figure this out. Pi is located right here, and the terminal point is negative 1, 0. Cosine is the x value or the y value. It's the x value, so cosine of pi is negative 1. What is the sine of pi? The sine of pi is the y value, so that will be plus... 0i. Well, look at that. Negative 1 plus 0i. 0 times i is 0, so this just ends up being 2 to the 50th times negative 1. And now you have negative 1 times 2 to the 50th. That's just negative 2 to the 50th power. So, I don't know if you really truly understand this. This is, again, this is complex form. That's trig form. But I, I just want to help you to appreciate. Every once in a while, you got to stop, you know, step back and smell the roses and see exactly what you've done. Folks, 1 minus i to the 100th power. If you sat down and did that, my guess is that you could spend the whole day multiplying that out 100 times, and you might, you might be able to come up with an answer. You might. If you do, there's a very good chance that you're going to have a mistake. It's going to be wrong somewhere. De Mavre's theorem says, hey, we just need one dry erase board, and we need about eight minutes, and we can tell you that 1 minus i to the 100 power, it's exactly negative 2 to the 50th. That's it. Notice it's a 2 to the 50th times negative 1. It's not negative 2 raised to the 50th. But that's, that's the final answer. Express both in trigonometric form, and in complex form, so you can see it, use it either way. That's pretty good stuff. That's one example of de Mavre's theorem. If you're a little bit confused, that's okay. We started easy. Now it's a little bit more challenging. Um, we're definitely going to look at two more examples of this on our next video. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you on the next one.